Today, all of these faces gone. Their deaths were 100% preventable. A husband, a father. How did you feel when you realized that you had killed two people? Was 30 days in jail enough? Only nine years old. Your daughter has 15 petals from home. You do this with your children in the car. Watch this with your teenage drivers, with your husband, your wife, everybody you love who drives a car. A life-saving encore. Next. What began as a show is turned into a movement because of you. And we're just getting started because I'm beyond passionate about this issue. And I'm not gonna stop until we can put an end to the deaths and the injuries that have happened because of people talking and texting while they're driving. You're gonna hear today some shocking statistics. But for me, what really hits home are the faces of the people who we've lost because of our addiction to cell phones and other devices. Now, these victims, I believe, are our angels, and it's up to us to make sure their deaths are not in vain. When you know better, you do better, and my hope is that after this show, you will know better. Since we first brought you this show two months ago, more than 27,000 accidents have happened, and more than 1,000 people have died in just two months. Think of how many deaths it took all of us to get to wear seatbelts. Let's not wait that long this time. Texting while driving is just as dangerous, if not more dangerous, than driving drunk. So please, gather all the drivers you love and watch this show together. And it's not just texting behind the wheel that is the equivalent of driving drunk. It's talking on the phone, too. They are both considered forms of a dangerous practice called distracted driving. Almost 6,000 people die, and a half a million are injured every year in crashes caused by drivers whose hands or minds are off the wheel. Studies show that a driver just talking on a cell phone is four times more likely to get into an accident. Distracted driving has become an epidemic, and more and more states are finally beginning to lay down the law. So far, 19 states and the District of Columbia have banned texting while driving. And in seven states and the District of Columbia, drivers can only use their cell phones if they are hands-free. A year ago, Shelly and her husband, Darren, were happily married parents to three beautiful girls. On Shelly's way home from a doctor's appointment, life as she and her family knew it was over. Well, Erica is my little sunshine because she lit up lit up the house you know she was making us laugh before she was a year old i was on my way home i was on the phone with my father and i said dad i have to go there's lights and fire trucks at the end of my street and i don't know what's going on and then there was all these people and a child laying on the ground and i had no idea it was my daughter i saw her bike and it was mangled and I realized she had an accident. The driver of the SUV says that she was distracted by her phone. She hit her head on with her 5,000 pound SUV. The neurosurgeon made it very clear she was gonna die. I spent the night with her that night. I held her, I cried, I kissed her, I sung to her, I just, needed to have time with my girl. Do you see this beautiful girl with this beautiful smile? That was my daughter, and she is gone now. I cannot get her back because of a person on a cell phone. You said it was two days before Thanksgiving. Correct. Yeah, a year ago. Yes. And this happened. Yeah. Tell us about that day. <laughs> it was a good day. I, uh, with three girls and busy, and I didn't get a chance to uh, spend a lot of time, you know, oh, checking on all the other girls. I have a 13 year old Jessica. Erica was our nine year old, and I have a four and a half year old Valerie. Mm -hmm. I had uh, spent the day redoing Erica's room. I was excited to uh, see her when she got home and show her that I switched out and put on her holiday bedding. And she and I love to do those things together. Love the holidays, love to decorate. And I went to the doctor, 
So I'd broken my foot running and um, got the okay that I didn't need surgery. I was on my way home. I called my dad on my phone on my Bluetooth. Didn't use my phone too much, but I did. Mm -hmm. And uh, was driving up and I saw all these people surrounding a child on the ground. I got out and ran over and saw my daughter's bike all mangled and a woman standing there and an SUV and I was completely uh, blown away. I, I had no clue what had happened. And my daughter was laying there still and my husband was there. And they told me that she had hit her. And the driver said, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. I didn't, I didn't see her. And they started to cut my daughter's clothes off and it was hitting me. This is very, very, very serious. And uh, we were uh, rushed to Children's Hospital. We spent the next two days in absolute hell. Mm -hmm. But you had been on the scene already. Yes. Um, Erica was riding her bike home from school. Um, and I was just waiting for her to get home. And my neighbor yelled for me and said, Erica has been in an accident. She's been hit by a car. And I ran outside. And um, uh, Erica was just around the corner from our house. Uh, she was 30 seconds from being home safely, mm -hmm. uh, just about to make the turn to, co to come home. I know you had said this to the producers, that your daughter was 15 pedals from home, 15 pedals on her bike from being home. So I know now you, want the, you think the laws should change because, you know, as we're going to hear time and time again in the show, most people think they can text and talk on the phone and they can handle it, and it's the other people who can't really handle it. So what needs to happen, I strongly believe, is that the laws need to change to put us all in check. Is that what you're working for? Absolutely. Um, uh, very shortly after um, this crash happened, um, my husband and I have become very proactive in trying to make a change in our state in Colorado. And uh, kept, I kept going down and testifying, and, and I said, you've got to change this law. You've got to change this law so no one else has to be in my seat right now. I don't want any other parent to have to go through this or a husband to lose his life. And we have been trying so hard to get this law changed, and we're going to continue until it happens. So what do you want to say to the people who are still doing it? Because everybody does it and thinks they can. You are doing too much. Phones were not meant to be called on in a car. Your car is not your phone booth. Your car is a place to get from A to B, and that is it. And your focus should be that and that alone. You've got precious cargo in that car. Your life, your children's life, they are not worth a phone call, a text, an email is not worth it. Get off the phone. Save a life. Don't talk and drive. That's what we want to say. Don't talk and drive. Thank you, Shelly and Dan. Thank you. And in the name of your daughter, thank you. So throughout the show, you're going to hear stories from more families who have paid the ultimate price for our deadly habit. And it's a habit we can begin to change today. A series of articles about distracted driving in the New York Times inspired me to do this show. One of the pieces was about this woman, Jennifer Ford, from outside Oxford, England. She is sharing her tragic story in hopes that no other mother experiences what she has. My daughter, Victoria, she was 24 years old. She was a fashion designer and she was a very beautiful. She really was the most loving daughter and um, she was my best friend. On the night of uh, 